Hi guys, uh, Andy here from Reacts in Blackpool. Just a quick overview of uh, a new, brand new device for many of us and also comparing it to an older device which uh, has been a bit of a market leader for some time. I wanted to show you the uh, Sirius by Skylatech. It's a new descender that they've put together. It's clearly put together to kind of rival uh, the ID. I can't here do a thorough test for you of everything. I, I do suggest that you have a play with both of them. Uh, I really like the Sirius, there's some features that are really cool and that I thought to myself, why didn't I think of that in the first place? And uh, So I wanted to show you guys anyway. Uh, just a quick overview then, uh, the Sirius, and I'm not going to go into depth on the ID, I'll just tell you some of the distinctives. The Sirius uh, is rated for 250 kilograms, depending on what standard you're working to, it's 250 kilograms, and you don't actually have to use an, uh, a crab on the tail rope in a rescue situation. So that's one of the significant differences with the ID, you are putting a crab on when you're rescuing somebody, but not with the Sirius. Uh, features, well it kind of operates in a very similar way, uh, but you'll notice that when I pull this back, if I just let go of it, it flicks back into place. So it's got an automatic locking function on there which is pretty cool. I know when I'm working with people on my own, uh, working for myself or training people, I end up having to go lock your descender off, lock your descender off and this actually does that automatically so that's pretty cool. To actually open up the uh, Sirius you've got to push in this little bit at the back, so that's an extra layer of security to stop you from uh, accidentally opening it up. The function kind of opening the device off the rope is fairly straightforward. Uh, little button in the middle here, you just push that in and it'll open. So it's a change for those of us who are very used to the ID with the little uh, plastic clip here. It's different, but it is really quite robust. That's one of the first things that hits you when you, when you play with it. It's just a tough bit of kit. There's no plastic on it actually. Uh, there's, there's stainless steel parts for everywhere that contacts the rope essentially, so uh, the cam and all these different components are all stainless steel and the body itself is aluminium so uh, it's supposed to last a lot longer than uh, some other devices, that's, that's what I've been told anyway. Uh, I've, I've had a play with it, I've been up and down the rope, changed over and that kind of thing but I've, I've, I wouldn't say I've worked for any amount of time with it so I can't vouch for that side. Uh, but yeah, it's a very robust construction. Something that's really cool that made me think, man, why didn't I think of that originally, was this function. Uh, if you leave it open like that and then load it, then it's not going to close itself, okay? However, watch this. If that's just there, okay, so you've partially closed it. Maybe uh, some closer got stuck in it. There was a sling stuck in there, a bit of rope or something. Is, and you've not quite closed it all. If I pull down on this now, it automatically closes itself, which I think is very cool. Uh, on top of that, it's worth being aware that when you're fastened into it, you know, it's on your harness, and you're hooked in there, uh, with some other devices, you have to actually undo it all together from the crab. And you might look at this and go, well, you have to take this off all the way from the crab, and then you can drop the device. That's not actually the case. They've created it in such a way that you can just open it, and it still stays fastened on the whole time, just because they've elongated this hole here. That's the bit that I wish I thought of, to be honest, because that is quite clever. Anyway, so, yeah, it'll automatically close itself at that point if you ma manage to mess it up. So that's, that's pretty clever in itself. Uh, in terms of the operation of it, it's really quite positive in its function. Uh, I, I'm obviously not hanging in it now, so I'm not going to hold the tail rope when I do this. You would, as normal with any other descender, need to hold the tail rope. But when you're descending down, uh, it's good, it's straightforward. I was thinking about it, thinking, should we make a video showing me descending down? And I think it'd be really boring because it looks like every other device that you might have seen uh, when you descend down. Anyway, down I go. If I pull too, pull too hard on the handle, it locks off. It's quite a positive lock as well. And as I lift up as well, it's quite a positive click which is nice, you kind of know where you're up to and you know it all feels really, really solid. So, uh, yeah, other bits you guys might need to know about. Uh, it's got this little uh, becket here, which allows you to do a couple of different things. One of them is to put a pulley through there for creating, say, a five to one pulley system. So as normal, we could create a three to one pulley system. That would be the typical thing that people look at doing, but uh, if you want to do a five to one, you can do that and you can integrate the descender itself into the system, so that's quite quite a clever little uh, uh, element to that. They've put a they put a bit of a, a bit of a hole in the end of the handle here. Now I'm told that this is so you can put a string onto it. Uh, and what you do is, if you're in, say you're in a rescue, this is the particular time I'm thinking of. If you're in a rescue and uh, your casualty is suspended on this, what you could do is put a crab through there that will lock the handle from actually closing. 
It won't, therefore won't lock itself off. You then have a little bit of string through here and as you descend down on your own descender, you can have a little bit of tap that pulls on that and simultaneously lowers the casualty down. Now I haven't tried that, but that's apparently uh, what that bit is intended to do. So that's, uh, that's a helpful thing. I'm sure there's lots of clever stuff that people will come up with, uh, other ways they can use that, but that's, that's what I'm told that's for. Uh, one of the most notable differences, probably that you guys will observe, is how it loads, okay? So here, with the ID, we've got the rope to the anchor, the tight bit uh, coming in to the device of the body, uh, the body of the device next to you. Whereas with this, with the Sirius, you're clipped in and you've got the tail rope coming out of the body next to you, okay? Now, this is a little bit different to what many of us are used to. However, uh, having played with it, I fairly quickly uh, got used to doing it that way round. Uh, one of the things that people might rightly be asking is, oh man, am I going to thread it incorrectly? Uh, that's definitely something to think about. Now on the ID, you've got uh, these teeth, whereby in descent, if you manage to thread the whole thing backwards, uh, the teeth, if you set in descent, will grab onto it, hopefully. Okay? That doesn't work if you're lowering somebody else down, uh, but they will in that direction. Now then, what, what happens with the... With the uh, with the Sirius, well, what, what they've done is they've put a little uh, fin on here. And this is something just to get used to. And, and I'll show you a little kind of uh, technique that's really helpful and makes it quite a lot easier to use, actually. Uh, if you do try to thread it the, the wrong way, for example, you start overriding it and push this up here and then right, I'll put that up there. Well, that fin actually gets in the way, which means that unless you think about how to override it, and there are ways you can manage to override it, but you've got to kind of think about it and get into bad habits. It's quite difficult to. So that's trying to load it as I might load an ID, and that fin stops me from doing that. Now, the best technique that I've found uh, is to get in the habit of loading from the tight rope, or from the anchor rope, to where it says up there. Now, this I found particularly helpful when I was hanging there just changing over from ascent, so I was hanging there on a jammer and I was swapping over into descent. And basically, this technique really helps you and it's one of the easiest ways to use it. Uh, you take the anchor rope and you lead the anchor rope and roll it round by that up sign. And it threads super easy then, okay? So it's very straightforward. Take the anchor rope, roll it round, and it's on, okay? Could pull down on that, could now couldn't I just get a cool function, but I can just close it up and it's good to go. Now, additional things that you should be doing anyway to make sure that you don't load these things the wrong way is as you normally do if you're changing over or about to have so you pull it through. Okay, so I can pull it through and if I know it does work when I pull through, uh, and I can also do a little uh, test lower as well, can't I? So I'd hold the rope and I'd, I'd check it was going the wrong way. Now, what's quite good on this actually with regards to uh, threading it the wrong way is that if you do somehow manage to and I've got to make sure I think about how to do this now if I can't actually thread it the wrong way then oh, you see it's quite a hassle actually to thread it the wrong way there we go right watch this when I'm trying to thread it the wrong way well I have threaded it the wrong way when I'm trying to pull it back up the rope it won't go anywhere and so that's quite telling. So one of the things that we tend to do anyway, as good practice, is just pull the rope through tight before you hang on it. Uh, and you'll find out at that point, oh, the rope doesn't actually pull through. So if you do thread it the wrong way, there's that extra element as well. What else to tell you guys? I can't think of anything right now, but I really like it. Uh, it's, uh, oh, one thing is apparently it's lighter than the ID as well. Uh, it's definitely a bit more compact as well, a little bit smaller, but it's apparently it's a bit lighter. I haven't weighed it myself, okay, so don't start bombarding my Facebook page or anything like that uh, if somebody finds out there's some, some grams the other way around. But yeah, apparently it's lighter than the ID. Uh, feel free to get in contact with us to find out about this. And uh, yeah, I expect that this will be quite a strong uh, contender actually against uh, equivalent devices.